So welcome everybody to another Behind the Team. Today we'll be talking about the twilight years of Takeda Shingen and the Takeda clan. Last we left off, Shingen's rivalry with Kenshin had resulted in both clans being weakened from the 4th battle of Kawakajima due to the high casualty rates that reached upwards of 60-70% to 70 of their forces. That being said, there was more bad news in the following years for Shingen as two plots were uncovered to take Shingen's life. The first in 1560 was by his cousin, Katanuma Nobumoto, who was ordered to commit seppuku after he was caught. The second in 1565 was masterminded by his own son, Takeda Yoshinobu, and Strangely, Shingen's old guardian, Obu Toramasa, who if you remember also helped Shingen to depose his father. Now Obu was made to commit suicide while Yoshinobu was confined to Tokoji Temple, where he died two years later. Whether it was natural, suicide, or ordered by Shingen, by murder, is not known. Now back to the story. The death of Yoshinobu left Shingen without ear which unnerved some of the clan but still this was quickly solved when Shingen had several sons in the years following. By 1564 he had subdued all of Shinano and shifted his attention to Kozuke and even managed to take some castles from the Uesugi after which he mostly concentrated on internal affairs for the next 5 years also including raids and local conquests in the area and this is the period where one of his greatest achievements other than his legend of his life and that is his public work of damming the Fuji River. This though great as it is makes me convinced that Shingen saw himself more as a regional power than one such as Oda Nobunaga who was aiming for total unification. And of course I do believe he wanted to unify the land but from projects like the damming of the Fuji River and all it makes me feel that he saw that vision of unifying Japan more of a far off thing compared to like Nobunaga. And the reason why, of course, is simply that the money and resources used to dam the Fuji River, I think under Oda Nobunaga, Tokugawa Ieyatsu, and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who have been put more to taking over the land through bribes, armies, and so on, and the dam in the river project will probably come after unification. But that being said, he was still a visionary, even setting progressive laws that tax everybody evenly from the peasants to the samurais. He also did away with a lot of the corporal punishment for minor offenses and actually was one of the few that actually allowed the payment of their taxes through gold instead of just rice. A forerunner of the Kandaka system. Now before we get back to another war Shingen will be involved in, I will be remiss not to talk about one of the more famous aspects of Shingen in war which is his many banners and of which the most famous is his Furin Kazan banner which actually has a quote from Sun Tzu's Art of War that basically translates into move fast like the wind, remain compact like the forest, attack furiously like a fire and defend yourself like a mountain. And it is this quote that Shingen lived his life by in terms of war strategies, life and even his laws. So if you wish you might actually want to contemplate on that line too. Now in 1568, Shingen moved his attention south to actually his past ally, the Imagawa. Now the Imagawa daimyo at this point was not Yoritomo, it was actually Ujizane, his son. As Yoritomo had got himself killed at the Battle of Okehazama by Oda Nobunaga, which is an interesting battle in itself. The weak leadership of Ujizane and the weakened state, the clan, had already lost them one of their vassals, the Matsudaira, which was led by Tokugawa Ieyatsu and the lands that he held, which was Mikawa province. Now at this point, even Shingen could see that the writing was on the wall for the Imagawa. Add to that the simple fact that the alliance between Takeda Imagawa had been severely weakened when Yoshinobu died and that was because Yoshinobu was married to an Imagawa princess and thus with his betrayal and his death that connection was basically lost. Thus after talks with Tokugawa Ieyatsu, Shingen made a deal with him to attack the Imagawa lands and split them among them both. The two lands being Totomi and Suruga. The Hojo was watching all this with great alarm and sent troops against Shingen with limited success. Now this success ended when Shingen counter-attacked into Hojo lands or Sagami and even reached Odawara which was the Hojo capital. Now Shingen was not able to take Odawara by siege and abandoned the siege quite quickly. But along the way back the Hojo mounted an ambush but was beaten by Shingen at Mimase Toge 
after which in 1570, Hodo Ujiyasu died and his heir, Ujimasa, made peace with the Takeda. Thus, at 49 years of age in 1570, the Takeda lands included Kai Shinano Suruga Totomi Hida and bits of Kozuke. And at this point, he was basically the only lord east of Mino that was a direct threat to Oda Nobunaga. And of course, this would be his next target, or which he would do so with 30,000 men. And to remind you of how much things have changed since Shingen began his career, you remember when he first fought the alliance of the four Shinano daimyos against him, he started with an army of 3,000 in Kai, and now he had over 30,000. That in itself is an achievement. Now this attack on the Oda was actually more a direct attack on the Tokugawa, an ally of the Oda, as earlier Tokugawa Ieyatsu moved his headquarters from Mikawa to Hamamatsu in Totomi, right next to the new Takeda lands they were taken from the Imagawa. And of course, Shingen saw this as a provocation. Even Oda Nobunaga advised Tokugawa Ieyatsu to pull back, but of course that did not happen. And to add fuel to the fire, Tokugawa Ieyatsu then opened up talks with the Uesugi, which prompted Shingen to act very quickly. Now in this period too, the Oda were in talks with the Takeda clan actually to stem Uesugi power. But strangely in the course of things, Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiaki got involved in the talks and they basically went south and in 1572 after settling his other fronts with alliances with the Hojo and the Satomi clans and when the snows closed off the northern passes that the Uesugi could use against the Takeda, Takeda's Ishingen then made his move against Ieyatsu, taking Futamata in Totomi and beating uh, Oda and Tokugawa force in Mikata Gahara, which resulted in the near complete defeat of the Tokugawa. After the battle, Tokugawa Ieyatsu actually returned to his castle, get this, with just literally five men. Now he ordered that one of them basically lighted all the fires on the walls and then beat a drum and leave the gates to the castle completely open. And then he sent his ninja led by the famous Hattori Hanzo to go out and cause as much chaos as he could among the Takeda vanguard. Now, seeing the open gates and the lighted fires, the Takeda vanguard felt it could be a trap and paused. It is then that of course Hattori Hanzo and his ninjas came in and caused havoc and convinced by all this that there was a large force waiting to attack or counter-attack them. The Takeda pulled back. Now this of course could be true, but another very good point to note is that it's also during this period that Shingen heard that Asakura, Nagamasa, and Ashikaga, Yoshiaki, would not attack the Oda and thus pin the Oda forces while Shingen could attack the Tokugawa. And that in itself might have convinced Shingen that he could not really complete the conquest. It's also at this time that the Uesugi forces was on the move might have convinced Shingen that it was safer to move back to protect his lands that he had now. In fact, another one talks about how this attack was actually not a full-fledged invasion to get to Kyoto. If it could happen, that's great. But some argue that this was actually an attack to test the reaction of the Oda and the Tokugawa. But in either case, this was what many will agree, the missed opportunity of destroying the Tokugawa clan. Later, in 1573, Shingen was attacking Tokugawa lands again at the siege at Noda Castle in Mikawa. Shingen was either shot by a sniper or had fell seriously ill, and he was taken to Kobawa in Shinano, but died there in May in the same year. Now, there's a lot of speculation on how he died and such, but I personally go with the illness theory, as the sniper legend is very similar to the death story of Amako Masahisa. And add to that, there, there is a document called the Koyo Gunkan. It talks about Shingen already being sick prior to the siege of Noda. Before his death, Shingen was said to have called Yamagata Masa, one of his greatest generals, to raise his flags on Seta Bridge, the traditional eastern gate to Kyoto, and died soon after. Now, his final words were actually a Zen quote, and it roughly translates to, It is largely left to her own natural bodily perfection and she has no special needs to resort to artificial colouring, powdering, to look beautiful. I'll let you interpret that as how you will. When Uesugi Kenshin heard of Shingen's death, he is said to have wept 
and declared mourning in all his land for three days in Shingen's honor and declared that he would not attack Takeda lands. The man who took over was Takeda Katsuyori, who Shingen actually advised Katsuyori to trust Uesugi Kenshin, again showing how much respect they had for each other, these two rivals. Strangely, the title or chief of Takeda clan was not actually given out to Katsuyori, but it was actually given to his son, Nobukatsu, who was Shingen's favorite grandson, from the forced marriage between Takeda Katsuyori and, and Oda Nobunaga's foster daughter, who died after giving birth to Nobukatsu. Now the reasons for the mistrust seems to be that Katsuyori's mother was the sewer princess who Shingen had as a mistress and also was technically Shingen's niece. The more important fact was that Shingen actually had tricked the Suwa daimyo into signing a peace treaty with the Takeda after he defeated them and then got him murdered. Thus the Suwa retainers always held a grudge or so Shingen thought. Thus with Katsuyori becoming through his relation to his mother the daimyo of the Suwa clan and having its castle in Takato Castle in Shinano, it seems that Shingen did not trust him fully and many times did not really acknowledge his military achievements. But all this aside, Nobukatsu not being of age, by de facto, Katsuyori became leader of the Takeda. Now it's worth mentioning that Katsuyori, while not incompetent, could not live up to his father. But unfortunately, he tried to get out of that shadow and extended his forces too much. And even with an alliance with the Uesugi to secure his northern borders, he basically lost the cream of the crop of the Takeda army at Nagashino against Oda Nobunaga. And then the Takeda clan was basically invaded from all sides and lost their place as a dominant clan at the Battle of Temmokuzan, where Katsuyori also committed suicide. Now Tokugawa Ieyasu, who came to take over Japan, used and kept many lords strategies and military reforms of Shingen and so much was the respect for Shingen that descendants of the Takeda clan even held prominent positions in the shogunate but of course he did melt those two pots that was used to fry his men when they were captured by Shingen now Shingen's legend is still popular today as of course we are still talking about him there actually is an annual celebration for Shingen in Yamanashi prefecture which used to be the Takeda lands and this celebration is called Shingen Ko, where a celebrity will play the part of Shingen and many people will dress up like his famous 24 generals and as Takeda clansmen. Another and the last interesting point I would like to put is Shingen is also somewhat responsible for one of the original sword schools of Japan, the Shin Kageri, whose founder declined a personal offer by Shingen to join the Takeda but did accept the character of Nobu from Shingen's name, Harunobu. He was thus named Kamizu Nobusuna. So that is the story of Takeda Shingen, arguably the story of the Takeda clan in its highest point. So thank you very much. Subscribe, comment, like. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much. Till next word.